A good morning to you all. Thank you for joining this ACE Agricultural Center of Excellence Virtual Full Day by the Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services Project funded by the EU. My name is Rollings, your host, and I am with Agribusiness Media. And I do hope that you will benefit from this virtual field day. And I also hope that you are staying safe, practicing social distancing, sanitizing, and masking up. We are live on Agribusiness Media and Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services Project Facebook pages. And I am sure that you have done your system check and your audio and uh, your speaker is working fine. So if you are not presenting, we kindly ask you to please turn off your video as well as your audio. So how this virtual field day is going to unfold is we are going to have informative presentations from the field followed by comments by our panelists. So we will give you farmers and participants a chance to ask questions and this has been built into uh, this program. So to allow for a smooth transition between the presenters, what we will do is we'll then have a question and answer session after all the presentations. So if you have any question or comment, please type in the Zoom chat section that is right at the bottom of your screen. Or if you're watching on YouTube, on Facebook, you can use the comments uh, section. So to our participants, please feel free to send your comments and your questions. Our panelists will then be able to respond uh, later on after the presentations. So you can also use the raise hand feature during the question and answer time. I also have a poll this morning and uh, if it appears on your screen, please just click your response. We are joined by Mr. Wadlaf Sanso, our guest speaker, is the head of the Zakis project. And amongst our presenters and panelists, we have the following experts. Mr. B. Magura, Agritex, is an Agritex officer uh, in Chegutu. That's from Chegutu District Center of Excellence with Mr. Moyo from Henderson Research Institute, Farai Dube from ICRISAT, and from Matopo Agricultural Center of Excellence, we have the following experts, Olivia Mukondwa, Alois Sashwayo, Chova Mzamba, and Jeffias Dera. So the ultimate gist of this virtual field day is to help you farmers learn and adopt methods that optimize your output per unit area, that also help you to reduce your production costs, to increase your farm efficiencies, be it in water or pest management, as well as incorporating new technologies as far as small grains and fodder crops are concerned. So I would now like to invite our guest speaker, Mr. Wadlaf Sanso. He is the head of the Zakis project. He's going to tell us more about this project in his opening remarks. Mr. Wadlaf Sanso. All right. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rollings. I hope I'm loud and clear to everyone. So my, I mean, my, my presentation is quite brief. Uh, and as Rollings mentioned, it's just some opening remarks and just to cement, uh, you know, what already is going to, what you're going to be seeing um, as, as you go through the tour and as you interact with the field day. So first and foremost, it's just a great welcome to everyone, to all viewers, listeners. And yeah, thank you for making the time to be part and parcel of um, our virtual field day through the Agricultural Centers of Excellence. I will not uh, spend too much time explaining around uh, what are the pillars of the Centers of Excellence or what is Zakis. I believe uh, we covered quite a bit in the, in the first field day, but nonetheless, as Rollings mentioned, it is funded by the EU. And our task really is to demonstrate uh, best practice agriculture and all things agriculture through the agricultural centers of excellence. So just uh, as some information, that is where the centers of excellence are located. Uh, we've got a center at Chibero Agricultural College, a center at Matopo's uh, Research Center, 
And then we've got four district um, centers, uh, one in Chegutu, one in Mondorongezi, uh, one in, in Siza, and one in Matobo district. So that just for, you know, just to give a bit of an understanding of where the information and the visuals that you're going to be seeing through, uh, through the, the virtual field day I will be coming from. And yes, it's exciting. You will be seeing uh, some information around the four Lamy worm. And uh, yeah, it, it, I guess it was something that came in as a request from, from farmers through what we call the farmer needs assessment. They wanted to know how best can they, uh, you know, also biologically control the scourge of the fall armyworm. And we responded to that. And that is the purpose really of the centers of excellence is to respond to the, to the farmer's needs and the farmer's requests. So in essence, we are looking at a farmer centric market led, um, you know, agriculture sector. So we would want to, to be able to, to make sure that we respond to the farmer's needs and also respond to the needs of the, of the sector as well. So I wanna take this opportunity just to make the clarion call and invite as many partners as, as possible to come and join activities at the Center of Excellence, uh, whether you're a private sector, academic institution, we've got facilities at our Centers of Excellence that will be able to host your trials, uh, your, you'll be able to you get assistance in terms of managing those trials all the centers are fully equipped uh, with water systems and uh, fairly competent teams or, you know, on the ground who will be able to help also with data collection and also just uh, the opportunity to then also participate in field days of this nature, um, you know, whether it's a virtual field day or it will be an infield one. So it is an opportunity at this time. And I also just want to invite uh, more partners to come on board input suppliers, equipment suppliers, um, more seed houses. We have quite a few already on the ground, but let's have more of them coming. You have direct access to about, to approximately 100,000 farmers through, the, through all the six centers that we have. So with immediate, you know, as soon as you, you, your equipment or your technology is showcased at the center, you have a direct catchment area of about 100,000 farmers. But I mean, that is just limited to those who are directly around the centers. But within the whole district, obviously, the, the reach becomes wider. So do take up the opportunity, get in touch with um, any of the, the, the numbers that you see there. And if there's need for, for the numbers, this flyer is available on our, our Facebook page and it will also be available on, on the Agribusiness TV page. Um, yeah, at this time, maybe let me just conclude by saying once again, uh, a great welcome, and I hope you enjoy and learn a few things from this virtual field day. And we look forward to doing a lot more of these and uh, be able, we also want to respond to your demands. So please uh, do not hesitate to make suggestions, to give comments and let us know what are some of the things that you would want to be seeing. And as a conclusion, um, the Zakis project, which is what is hosting the center uh, and establishing the Agriculture Centers of Excellence funded by the European Union under the Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth Program. It's, impl it's, a, it's implemented in partnership with the ministry, with our Ministry of Agriculture. And the idea really is to bring the integration of research, extension, and education. We need to see those three entities functioning and also providing a service to the farmer. At the end of the day, we are all targeting the same farmer. And the idea is we want the farmer to improve in productivity. And we want the farmers, we want farming to be a profitable and lucrative business. Um, thank you so much. And back to you, Rollins. Thank you very much for the great presentation and opening remarks, Mr. Wadlaf Sanso. Indeed, Zakis is helping farmers improve their income, productivity, and ultimately improve their lives. Thank you once again for the opening remarks. We now invite Mr. Magura in Chegutu for a presentation on sorghum production. Uh, 
ini ndino itwa magura bili ndini agriculture extension officer anukava area ino pano pa dzinga inamu area yedu ino kana kuti prize yedu rino re dzinga inamu tiri mu tiri mu agroecological zone mu region 2 b tine tarisira e, kana mwaka wedu uchinge wakanaka tino tarisira mvura ino range kubva pa 700 kusvika 1000 mm asi iko zvino ndofunga munotenderana nemi vabereki kuti tiri ku experience inonzi climatic change e, ku station kwa ndino gara pa huru nakadza hapo ndine rain gauge tati chi record a rain gauge kubva kutanga kwe season e, mvura yedu takatanga kuwana mvura muna september asi kusikira parinas ta record a mvura iyo ino ita iyo cumulative ino ita iyo 846 mm e, takapedzisira kuwana ma effective rains musi wa 4 march then kubva musi wa 4 march kusika musi wa 18 march taka experience a first e, dry spell yedu kubva musi wa 19 march kusikira nas atina kana kuzombowana imwe mvura yakanaya kuno ku area yedu saka crop ya ndiri kuda kuti tive tinodzisana iye mafunde mbeu yedu iye mafunde inonzi iyo masia e, e short season variety inongoda iyo mazuva ano ranger kubva pa e, 100 kusika 113 days saka e, ndima ino yamburu kuona e, intero yedu takashandisa intero ye e, kubva pa 45 kusika 60 cm kubva pa roe imwe kuenda pane imwe roe then in roe yedu taikashandisa kubva tongoti kubva pa 10 kusika 15 cm e, crop yedu yemafunde vanenge vachiti pa hectare e, Tininge tui tarisira kuwane kuunge tine ma plans asiri pasi pe 350,000 plans pa hekta nduo plant population ininge jikuru zirwa pa mbewe yedu ye mafunde. Mafunde ane mabasa akawanda anuosa nganisira kuti e, ifood security. E, tino kuna kuyo waita sadza. Uyeze tine gona kwaita kubika na odoro mafunde akanakira kuti ari drought tolerant hanyanyo affect one ku shomeka kwemvura mafunde e uyeje pakwajgara tino jgara ne compound d maybe a eh, 100 kana to 200 kgs per hectare zvinenge zvakuenderana manyende kuti eh, ivhu redu takambo ritora oherer kaenda kuti rinoongororwa neve soil and chemistry analysis because zvakakosha kuti tinenge tichikurudzira vari nekuti iona eh, ikuti ivhu renyu ratorwa rino analyzwa mouzwa a e, nutrient status kuti a pa ivhu renyu riya riri kuleka kudya kwakati ndi kwakati ndi kwakati the soil and the chemistry institute wozo pama recommendations manje vachiti a pa ivhu renyu riya taona kuti riri kuleka kudya kwakati kwakati e, to tedzera izvozvo tatedzera izvozvo e, gore duro varadi ra rasimuka e, saka pana pa mbeu ya muri kuona i mbeu inonzi masia ndofunga muchaona uh, takaita intercropping pana pa tine mbeu ye beans ya murikuona muno beans i legume inosia kudya kwe nitrogen mufu kudya kwe nitrogen uko kuno benefit au mbeu yedu ye mafunde trites eh saka mbeu iyo ya murikuona E, on average tinenge tichitarisira kuti e, go 
tingango wana go kubapa one turn maybe kushika one and a half kana kushika eh, two turns zvichienda na nekuti eh, imhando ipi ye mafunde yawarima aya ndati i masia uye zve zvadaro mafunde aya pano gona kuita challenge yekuti ano jiwane shiri kana ari machena aya shiri dzino to ita field day dzino afarira zvakanyanya asi tine mando imwe inonzi ns double ine mapfunde matsuku mapfunde iwayo ane substance inonzi tannin tannin ni iyo inovava saka iwao mapfunde anonzi double ns double five double one haji wene shiri titesa eh eh zadaro mapfunde edu ya ano tino apply au futi en kuitira kuti tive tino wana go raka rakanaka eh mapfunde zvakare akanakira kuti tinogona ku ano jiwa isadza uye zve mamwe anogona kushandiswa ku bika doro saka ne mamiriro akaita weather edu iko zvino tiri ku experience ya tinoti climatic change ma kunaye kwemvura kuri ku ngo shifta mwaka wedu zvinenge zviri kuratidza kuti mvura yedu inenge ya ku ya shifta ndikati semwenzaniso season ya pera hii 2019 to 2020 ah atina kuwana mvura yakanaka ndingati pa record Eh, 741 millimeters iyo season ya 219 to 220 as iyo ino yatabai eh, Paris ne 846 eh, millimeters ndofunga imwe challenge iyo yatiri kuti varimi patino tenga mbeu dzemapfunde ngati tarise kuti ah mbeu iyi andatenga inoda mwaka wakareba zvakadi ino space kwa sei yakamira sei pa ku jiwane shiri ne zvimwe zvi ne mamwe mapest eh saka tiri ipapa pa mafunde mafunde normally anogona ku zvipembenene zvatinosangana nazo zvinosanganisira ma acids ne ma caterpillars tikange taona kuti a ah, zvipembenene izvo zvizvadarika mwero eh tinogona ku spray tichishandisa mishonga yakafanana nana eh roga kana kuti dimethoid kuitira kuderedza eh, damage nenge chikonzerwa ne acids kana kuti makonya aya ano kanganisa kanganisa mashisha ndingati eh mushidimbu ndo zvakanangana ne mbewe ya murikuona yemapfunde Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Magura, for that uh, great presentation. Uh, we have learned a lot. Uh, we will now have a five, a five minute uh, of comments from Olivia Mukondwa on sorghum production. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Rollins. Uh, I will just uh, add if just a few quick key points that farmers should take note of. Uh, when they are growing small grains, particularly sorghum and palmillate, uh, first they must uh, choose the right variety uh, depending on the end use. As Misty Magura was saying, it depends on the use uh, of the variety that you, are, uh, that you want to grow. Uh, is it for brewing? Is it for food? Is it for uh, forage? So our farmers must choose uh, the right variety for the end use for the of, of their product and another also key point is the use of quality seed our farmers should use quality seed 
it, 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 it's a good thing that uh, most of our seed companies these days, they are also marketing uh, uh, small grains and uh, seed is now available in different um, farmer agro or uh, through uh, different agro dealers. So our farmers should also uh, uh, use um, quality seed for it. If in effect, the, the type of seed that they use have got an effect on the uh, final yield that they are going to get. And uh, also uh, they must take, uh, take note of the uh, time of planting. Uh, when growing small grains, as Miss Magura has said, they are loved by birds. And uh, uh, one can also take uh, care of that by early planting. And um, we are saying uh, the time of Planting is ranges from uh, end of November to mid December. So early planting uh, can enable our farmers also to escape uh, periods of uh, or high number of, of birds uh, feasting on their on their on their um, crop. And also, when doing land preparation, they must make sure they uh, achieve a fine seed bed. For as we know, our uh, small grains uh, seeds, they are very small. Uh, and also they should also uh, uh, take note of the planting depth. They must also only concentrate within the top two uh, centimeters. Uh, our small, so that our small, our small seed do, does not have uh, enough energy to push uh, if they are planted, uh, at de deeper depth, more than two uh, centimeters. So, so they must uh, ensure that there's a good to, to encourage a good germination and hence uh, achieve uh, the plant populations that uh, their target plant population. And also uh, during the, the growing uh, period of the crop, uh, they must make sure uh, within the first six to eight weeks, uh, their crop is weed free. Uh, weed has got an impact uh, on the on, on our crop. Uh, since uh, these small grains, the um, uh, crops which uh, which do well in the, uh, the dry regions, with they compete with water, they compete with our plants for for water for nutrients. So. Uh, within the first six to eight weeks, uh, our farmers should make sure that um, their crop is weed free. And another point uh, is the, uh, protecting their crop from, uh, from bed damage. If they are growing, um, especially the white sorghums, which are loved by birds, and the, to some extent, even the red sorghums, where there is no option, where there is no other crops, even the red sorghums are also affected by bees. So after uh, growing your crop uh, during the flowering or during the grain filling stage, from the grain filling stage until up to, uh, when your, your, your grain is uh, dried up, uh, farmers must uh, scout and uh, take note if um, their uh, crop is affected by beds. If they are affect, the beds are affecting their crop, they must scale uh, to protect their, their, their harvest. And they also, uh, the, another key point, uh, soon after their uh, crop has uh, reached the physiological maturity and they've tried, it is encouraged to early harvest. There's no need to delay uh, exposing your harvest to the to the beds, and another also um, uh, key point during processing or after harvesting is not to mix uh, your grain with soil. Uh, there must be minimal contamination, soil contamination, because uh, if uh, your grain is mixed with soil, it's no longer palatable. That is where um, most of our, our our farmers or our consumers, those who are using uh, small grains for 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 for, for sadza and so forth. They you, they tend to shun away from uh, a small grain, saying uh, 
the salsa is always mixed with soy. So our farmers also must take note of uh, not mixing the, the grain with soy. Uh, in short, I think those, those are the, just a few uh, points that I want to add on Mr. Magura's presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Olivia, for the insightful uh, comments. Um, I see a number of farmers today burning crop residues. Mr. Moyo from Anderson Research Station will help us on how we can turn crop residues into feed for our livestock uh, in the next uh, presentation. And you know, because I have been fan of our Muzinga Namo Cooperative. E mafunde a tauro pano apa anga a tauro pano apa. Aka na kira kuti tambo uzozi kanzi e ano shanda munezu sakawanda. Vano ano guna kuajika mafunde a choya kubika saza. Asu zakare mafunde aya ano guna kushanda zakare kuzufuyo zedu zagata semombe. No idea say Kana Vundera Chequair, Panosara Stoker Achir, Snaku, Raka Richaka Mira. Sagas that no eat at no guna quita a treatment yao, mafunde yao, could tigo put a chief in the Mombezedu. Kajinji, Tinoana, Vamo and Wachi, Arasa, Kanauti, Vachita, discard, Vasinga Chengeti, Tika Tora Tika Chengeta for the next. Uh, for future feeding, and out for conservation. Pane inonzi urea uh, stove treatment. Yet not to take a tora majanga ya 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 ma sogam edu. Tino guna kwa trita. O fava. Tozo pamombe. Pangwa ya tine gita omerwa. Tino suka pangwa ya tine gita Especially nezu fuyo zu edu. Tichitaza kutito ita seyi. Zufuyo zu nezu akufa. Asi majanga ya ya ya. E ma funde ya. Tino guna kwa shandisa. Tino tora... Yeah, don't you really, yeah, yeah. Fertilizer, you really, yeah, yeah. No, it's very sick. It reports 6% nitrogen. And it is. Uh, total uh, drum, remvura, 200 liters, 210 liters. Touch total 50 kg, yeah, you really. Total mu drum, red, red, red. To sanganis. I am a jungle that no gonna go eat at no gonna go to a chair checker checker to gonna kungana village to checker checker. I think if per day one, we're not gonna check a 50 kg, go checker checker into pieces. What is the reason you go checker checker into pieces? Trick with you, can I try checker into pieces? To no gonna go shanda nose like a knack to go to check my piece of cut on the cheek, cheek, box chair matches. Then Tadaro. Mix your tight air, 50 kg urea, ne 200 liters a drum rare. You know, gonna could treat a mashanga eduaya, ari 1000 kgs, which means a ton. And it is. So, no tora, tada ro, ta checker checker, ta mix a fertilizer yedu ya, name vura, ta checker checker mashanga edu, to no chera gomba, so gaza water silage, to chera gomba. Tochi sa mashanga aya mukati mechi me gumbaria. Tika isa leya ino kwa naka nauti 15 centimeters. Tochi tora mvura ya ya ne ken. Andiri. Ken ya ya ne ka chingarichi. Fine rose. Fine rose. Yes, fine rose. <laughs> then toi tora ya ya. Tochi diriza. After about 15 centimeters or 20 centimeters. To diriza. To tora mix ya ya to diriza mashanga ya ya. Then odin. O, o compact, o sikuwa sikuwa, o compact, kuti parige kupinda meipo. In other words, what we are saying is, kucheka kwa chaita kwa kuno tipa asila zwa kari kukompta, kukompakta, kwa tsindira. Anu tsindirika zwa kanaka, kana taa cheka cheka into pieces. Then to ramba chida aro chitika isa imwelea, tichisa futi chi, mvura yedu ya yaka mitwa ya yuri ya nechi, ni mvura. Tichida aro chisa kushika gombaredu wa zara. Tada aro, tuchitua plastic redu. Plastic, my plastic, I had no toram cut in town. My mamma plastic, I don't my black plastic sheets. I to not try you, touch you, Varapam, so we have to close it up. Then Tadaro to try you for Pam Soro to Isa. 
then after about 30 days kujika kwetu kwa mbe kuninga kwa kwana kwa ita kwa hivyo saka ndo imwe system yatogo na kushandisa pa kushandisa mashanga edu e ma e mafunde aya zvangu fane chibage chaicho chibage tinongoita the same thing anti ne mashanga chibage aya awo makudaro so tofana kwa chengeta tozwa treat za tataura izozwe but nofana kungwarira ati fane ku treat ne any other fertilizer but urea specifically urea because we are not going to ah, any nitrogen mkati no we are not saying that we are saying urea specifically 46% nitrogen no other fertilizer but urea tino gona kushandisa zvakare pakuita feed formulation yedu like my chickens you can include grain as a source of energy saka no gona kushandisa ya oshandisa grain source of energy otswa gawana source of protein Musanganisa, then you want to money feed, then you home made feed. Perform, you know, because feed, you are going to eat. You chance to find it. So, when do you chance to go and get a stove? Do Thank you very much. Uh, that was an eye-opening presentation, Mr. Moyo. Uh, thank you. Okay, please pay attention to our next presentation on small grains uh, by, by uh, Olivia Mukondwa, uh, Chova Mzamba, Farai Dube, and Busa Nabangiti. Um, it's a presentation on small grains. Thank you very much for that great uh, presentation, um, Olivia, Chova, Farai, and uh, Busa Bangiti. Uh, just to remind our participants, uh, please keep the questions and comments coming through the chat section uh, or comments on the Zakis uh, Facebook page and on the Agribusiness Media Facebook uh, page. Um, please uh, keep them coming. We have received a lot of questions and uh, please feel free to share with us. Uh, and uh, just to find out if there are any quick comments on uh, the small grains uh, production uh, from uh, the Matopo uh, Agricultural Center of Excellence. Uh, Olivia, any quick comments on the presentation? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, small grains, um, they've got a, a, a whole list of advantages over uh, the usual cereals like maize that we are used to grow. And for uh, us farmers who are living in the semi-arid areas where uh, rainfall is usually be, be low or, or uh, 450 millimeters, we are encouraging them to grow small grains because they've got a strong adaptive advantage and they've got low risk of failure in the event of drought. And you know, uh, small grains, when comparing them to maize, they've got uh, high chances of success. And you, they've got a lot of uh, other uses besides the, using them for salsa, for, uh, for bread, you know, they have got a lot of uh, health benefits, which include um, they reduce if you are co consuming of if, if you are using uh, small grains in, in your diet, they they can reduce uh, the risk of heart attack, stroke, and even the risk of uh, the type two diabetes. So uh, before we are prescribed by doctors to, 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 to consume uh, small grains. We are just saying, um, uh, grow small grains and they, they let them be part of your diet before uh, you are told uh, to, to consume them as a prescription. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Olivia, for uh, the quick uh, comments. So farmers, you agree with me, I believe that uh, in many farming areas, readily available water is in short supply. And although the total annual uh, rainfall in an area may be enough to sustain your farm needs, 
it is usually, the distribution is usually uneven. And uh, to the extent that long dry periods are interspaced with periods of intense rainfall. The next short presentation on rainwater harvesting by Farai Dube will show us how this problem can be managed. Uh, we are here at Spilisos Bandas uh, homestead uh, in Ward 10 Matobo. What we see here, uh, we are working with the farmer doing uh, participatory uh, research with different tillage uh, techniques. We have observed that the farmer is uh, a, a plot on conventional tillage, plot on reaping, a uh, plot with basins and a plot with uh, uh, tight ridges and also the farmer has uh, uh, infiltration pits within uh, his uh, uh, grade, uh, graded uh, contour. So these uh, technologies that we are bringing to the farmers to compare with uh, conventional technologies as uh, you know now that climate is changing uh, we are going to experience uh, droughts, severe droughts, and being in, in this semi-arid uh, region, it's necessary for farmers to choose a simple technologies that can uh, hold water, that can stop uh, the, 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 the little rainfall that they receive fr from running off. So with the tide ridges, they ensure that water is held and is infiltrated uh, in, in the soil. Basically, our, our, our simple message to the farmer is that if water is, is, is running, let it walk. If it is walking, let it sit. If it is sitting, that's how we want it. We want it to infiltrate so that no water is lost. We benefit from each and every drop of water that falls within uh, a field. Okay, uh, my name is Mr. Chova Mzamba. I'm an agronomist under Agronomy Research Institute. Um, basically here we are at uh, INCISA, District Agricultural Center of Excellence, where we are expecting farmers to come and learn uh, different technologies that we are actually uh, implementing in the district. So here, as you can see, we have a crop which is maize under conservation agriculture. Under conservation agriculture, we are trying to showcase some different uh, conservation technologies that can be implemented by farmers, like the use of a reaper tine, the use of ridges, and also the use of mulch. So we are comparing different tillage systems and water conservation technologies. We had five of, uh, of them which we, we implemented here. So the idea is we want to make sure that each and every farmer is exposed to this technology so that he or she can choose the best technology uh, that he or she feels like uh, he can adopt and use it and uh, actually get a better yield. How do the farmers get to participate in this particular project? Uh, farmers participated very well. We, we, we have a total number of 50 farmers in this district who are participating in this uh, project. So basically, although the season was good, but results are showing that uh, these technologies can actually help farmers in terms of yield, in terms of water uh, conservation, in terms of uh, increasing the yield of different crops, uh, which includes even the small grains, sorghum and millets. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Farai and uh, Chova Mzamba, for uh, that great presentation. Uh, any quick comments on this, uh, Chova Mzamba? Thank you so much, Mr. Holden.
Uh, my comment and encouragement to the farmers is that uh, as we are quite aware of the impact that have been brought by climate change, indeed the farmers should actually try to adopt some of these methods of diverting, inducing, collecting, storing, and conserving surface runoff for agricultural production purposes. In as much as we are trying to encourage farmers to use early maturing varieties, drought tolerant varieties, but in severe drought situations, these varieties cannot produce anything if we do not support the crop in terms of moisture availability. So I'll quickly talk about the few water harvesting technologies that the farmers can use and benefit. We talked about the no till tight region, which are semi permanent regions with cross ties uh, along the furrows to trap runoff. So, what we are trying to minimize here is the loss of water. We want to make sure that we utilize every drop of water that we receive. It must be confined within the field. No water is supposed to be lost through uh, runoff. So the tide ridges are there uh, to capture the rainfall and store the water that will be used by the crop. So the ridges actually, they are very simple to make. The farmers can make them manually or those who can afford, they can buy uh, of John uh, ridges and some of them which might have even a tire maker to make those tires. So the advantages of these ridges that you can use them for a period of six seasons depending on the crop rotation practice. So you can see it's not that a, the farmer will be having the challenge of making those ridges every season, but it's just a matter of maintaining them for, for, for the period of maybe six weeks, maintaining the same region. And then one other important thing to note, if a farmer decides to use the region, uh, they should actually listen very carefully to the weather report for the season. In situations where there's uh, a lot of rainfall, like in other regions, regions one, two, probably in region three, where we receive better rainfall, it is important that the farmer plant the crop on top of ridges to avoid uh, chances of water logging. But in dry parts of the country, like here in uh, southern region, we, we normally encourage farmers to plant uh, the crop uh, in the furrow so that the crop can benefit from the water that will be available. For Ah, great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chova Mzamba, for those uh, insightful comments. So since 2016, the invasive fall armyworm has been one of the most rapidly spreading and the highly devastating pests across Africa. And also affected by fall armyworm are expected uh, or are estimated to be 12% more likely to experience hunger. So the good news is that this can be managed. Let us learn from the next presentation on for armyworm control. We now invite um, 
the next present. Fall armyworm is an important crop that is affecting uh, cereal crops here in Zimbabwe and it is, it is causing damage even in smallholder farming communities. Uh, it traces back, its origin back into the Americas but it has affected uh, the greater part uh, of the world. So as ICRISAT we are experimenting with the low cost um, are methods that smallholder farmers can afford in controlling fall armyworm. So we are we have uh, different intercrops that we are trying trying out. For example, maize intercropped with cowpea, sorghum intercropped with cowpea, maize intercropped with lab lab, maize intercropped with mukuna, and uh, also trying to see if we can put a border on for banana grass uh, in a push and pull uh, mechanism. Will it be effective in controlling fall armyworm? What we are noticing in uh, farmers' fields uh, who, who are doing the participatory ex experiment together with us is that where they have intercropped their cereal with uh, either cowpea or lab lab or mukuna, uh, the incidence and uh, the severity of the attack of fall armyworm is significantly low. And, uh, and farmers are pointing out that this is a technology that they will take up and possibly uh, even extend to the, the greater part of their field. Um, we are here at uh, the Matobo, Matobo District uh, Center of Excellence. What we see here is that this simple uh, technology of intercropping maize and a legume, in this case cowpea or lab lab, can significantly suppress uh, the fall armyworm pest that has caused uh, significant damage of uh, most uh, cereal crops here in Zimbabwe. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that uh, great presentation. Uh, Farai, we uh, really appreciate. We now invite comments, uh, just uh, under a minute comments from uh, Jeffias Dera. Thank, thank you, Rolings. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to make a few comments on, uh, uh, on the presentation that has been made by, by Farai. Uh, the, the implemented um, um, work uh, that was in the presentation was designed here at, uh, at Matopo's Agricultural Center of Excellence. And uh, it was uh, designed by one of the research officers uh, uh, giving the comments. Um, I also take this opportunity to highlight some of the work that we are doing here at MES uh, as um, research officers. We do get out uh, research uh, in plants, uh, pest and disease management as it's been presented by Farah. We also do uh, research work on planting debts. We do uh, research work on soil fertility uh, management and the water, um, uh, water conservation. We also do a uh, variety of evaluations. We do also um, weed management. Uh, in, uh, in a nutshell, we uh, work on um, good agronomic practices, uh, technologies, and then we research on them so sites that farmers can also um, be able to adopt uh, those, uh, those technologies. Coming back to uh, the issue of the fall we, we had a trial here which, uh, uh, which was designed here at MES. We wanted to look into issue, um, factors that can reduce cost on the farmer uh, such that they can uh, do away with the use of chemicals. So we substituted um, some uh, crop elements that has been researched on some other research that has been done. 
uh, which came out with the technology called uh, uh, push pull. So we are using legumes, which are cowpeas, lab lab, and the mukuna, uh, which are uh, which yes, we we think that uh, they will help in uh, pushing away some. Um, uh, some pests, especially for even with uh, a stock border. So we also have um, um, banner grass that we are substituting for napier grass, which we put on the border rows such that uh, this one, they will attract the, the full armwim moth to lay eggs uh, uh, on them. What we have found out in preliminary in the findings that we had carried a research on it uh, at the mess is that uh, um, the intercropping uh, really it uh, assists very much in um, pushing away uh, the full uh, the full arm. We realized that we had got uh, reduced the pest damage in crops where they were intercrops, uh, meaning to say um, farmers who practice crop diversification uh, in the sense of intercropping. Uh, they will experience low crop uh, damage. Uh, when we also look at the use of banner grass at the borders, we saw that it, in earlier stages, uh, the full armwim really has got uh, little damage happening in those, uh, in, the, in, those, in those plots. So however, going forward, we are going to uh, look again into the trial, um, and um, uh, then pass on uh, the final conclusion and on the uh, on, on the research work. We also hope that we'll also be including some other crops um, like maize, uh, sorghum as well in the in the in the in the in the, in the research plots. So gen generally, we can say um, intercropping. Yes, we know. Uh, Will reduce full armwim and also the issues of the, uh, the, the banner grass also help in uh, reducing uh, pest damage. Uh, great, uh, great work there, Jeffias. Thank you. Well done. Um, now, uh, because of our time, we, we have received a lot of questions and comments from farmers and uh, participants. Thank you very much. And uh, because of our time, we'll randomly pick just a few uh, questions. So the first one here is, uh, I planted sorghum last season and the biggest challenge I had was with the beds. What is the best solution to this? I don't know who can take that one. Uh, is it uh, Olivia? Okay, thank you. Um, as I have highlighted earlier on, uh, White sorghum varieties, they are very, very susceptible to birds. And the only um, measure that we can uh, put to that is, is scaling. And before or considering scaling, the farmers must early plan uh, to, uh, in order to, uh, in order to, to make sure that uh, the, when our sorghum crop matures, it coincides with the uh, maturity of other feedstuffs in the forest, like grasses, uh, etc. So that the, by the time you will be harvesting your sorghum, uh, the beds will be con still concentrating a lot of foodstuffs in the forest. So there they won't be much uh, uh, damage on, on your crops. But if you let plant, you need to scale. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much for taking that one, uh, Olivia. Then uh, whilst you are still there, um, there's another question related to sorghum. Is, is sorghum affected by storage pests? Yes, sorghum is affected by storage pests, just like any other grain um, uh, crop. So uh, you need to consider uh, use, use of uh, storage chemicals. To, 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 to cater for the storage pace. All right, uh, thank you. Then another one is, um, okay, thank you for the presentations. I'm going for sorghum this season. All right, farmer, thanks for the comment. Then 
Uh, I like the innovation on four armyworm control. It reduces production costs and promotes organic farming. Okay, all right, farmer. Thanks for the comment. Then another one, I think this is a comment as well. My neighbors are currently burning their sorghum residues. They should have attended this field day. I'll share notes with them, all right, farmer. Uh, thank you. And because of our, um, okay, uh, I see Jeffias, your hand is up. Well, okay, I just wanted to add on, uh, on the issue of uh, the bed damage. Uh, I think what farmers should also look in is um, uh, the most damage happens from, especially at soft dose stage, when the, the grain is uh, as, uh, 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 got milk. Uh, I think the farmer should then intensify their scary juice during that, um, uh, during that time was the, the, the much damage that we happens during uh, that, that time. And also we can, we can remove the crop from the field early. Uh, even if uh, the moisture percent is 23%, uh, 25%, such that we can, it can dry somewhere where it is safe, where there is no, uh, where there are no beds. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you very much for taking that one. So because of our time, this marks the end of our field day. We would like to thank Zakis for this event and many thanks to our panelists and presenters for the great presentations uh, and also the insightful comments. To our participants, thank you very much for participating and we do hope that you have benefited from the great presentations we had. We have posted a link to the Zakis Facebook uh, Facebook page, please like and share. From Agribusiness Media, my name is Rollings. Enjoy your day. Thank you.